Okay, so this game you're watching me play right now is called Ski Free. It's kind of an interesting story behind it, but I like a lot of the things that it has. We actually had a student a few years ago build a nice little version of it. Oh, I just got eaten by the Yeti. Anyway, this game is funny, and um, it has a funny story to it. This guy named Chris worked for Microsoft as a programmer. He built it just for fun at his house. His programming manager sees him playing it, and he's like, we got to include that in the next Windows Entertainment package. So they did. So it got out into the world, and tons of people played it. I've heard so many of those stories. It's crazy. Um, so whenever you're tinkering, keep it. Build on it. Customize it. Anyway, they decided to um, build a, a second version in 1993, and he started working on 2.0. But then it was abandoned because they lost the source code. So they're building part two. They lose the source code, they don't know where it is, and they said, ah, don't start over, let's just do something else. So, so that's a little description behind Ski Free. There's some elements I really like that it has that I thought were great to point out to you guys. So I decided to build a good portion of it. In fact, I might do this in a couple parts so I can build more of it, because this game is so interesting. Now, because it took me a little while to get the skier moving at the right speed and controls the right way, we are going to start with a little bit more code than usual. So I already have 51 lines in here. A um, couple of the main parts are, well, let me just pull it up. So here we have, we have our guy, and he's always getting pushed down. I just wanted to make it like that for the game, the version I want to make. Then we have this start, and we have this finish. Now, I don't have him changing images yet. I'm going to do that with you. But a couple of things you'll notice in the code is here is our target area. The window size is 500 by 600, but the background size is 500 by 2500. So our Y is a lot bigger than the actual what you see. So there's a way to make it scroll. So we have this little function called sjs.scrollable, and then you just pass in the objects. Notice I don't have parentheses around them of, the, of how you want to scroll. I want the player to scroll the background. So now if I hit save and I hit refresh, now it's going to look just white for a while and we don't know if we're going anywhere. Eventually we'll hit the hit the bottom. There it is. Okay, so there was our little ski free trial. And that needs to get moved another hundred, that finish line. Anyway, so the next thing that's going on is we have this array and I have three images. Here's my skier down, here's left down, and write down. Okay, so I have these three images, and then I have this variable that starts at one. And if you look at my player, he's using image array one. So image array one right there. So he's using, I guess I could make it ski position is what that stands for. It kind of looks like ski pose. But anyway, our player is going to start with image one. And then as we hit the right and left key, we're going to switch between these images. I think it's going to look pretty cool. Um, and let me think, was there anything else I needed to do before we start again? This add text, that right, that's right. So what's going on there is we have this background, but I didn't use an image. I just wanted white, and then we'll add things to it. So what you can do is you can say, I know you're not a real image. It's basically the browser saying, hey, this image isn't real. It's broken. I know it's broken. But I can style it with Z index, and whatever has a Z index, by default, everything's one. If you're lower than that, then you get hidden behind it. So it's a way to do stack order. If a couple images are overlapping each other. You can choose who shows up. So now you'll see that broken thing doesn't show up to the user. It's actually behind um, this background. So that's what's going on there. All right, I think we are ready to go. I've got you up to speed. We have a start checkered, a finish checkered. Here's our player properties. It's scrollable. Every 100 milliseconds, I adjust his speed. That will just keep him going so that he's going downhill. When you push down, it'll set the image to 1, and it will set our ski position to 1, and it will move the player down. So you can go a little bit faster by holding the down key. Now when you move left, it, you still go a little bit down, and then it pushes him left and pushes him right. So what I want to do here is make a little if statement. And this if statement is going to say, if I push the left key, I want to change images here. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to make an if statement. I'm going to say if ski position is less than zero, I got to think about this, then our ski position must equal our ski position 
minus 1, because I want him to now go to the left. And so now our set image is going to be array ski position. All right. And then I'm going to put in an else, which means, so if our ski position is greater than 0, so if it's 0, if it's 1, then we're going to take it down a notch. And then we're going to show that image. Otherwise, we want ski position to equal zero. That way we won't get a blank image. Let's see if, that's, if that works. So when I hit left, he goes left. When I hit right, he's always stuck at... I can move between left and down now. Okay. So now here we're pretty much going to do the opposite. But we have to add in another thing because since we're going to be moving it up, I need to say if ski position is greater than or equal to zero and ski position is not equal to two. Okay, um, what's going on here? Then I'm just going to copy this stuff. Got an extra one of those and that should probably be two. And this is going to add one. So what's happening is if it's in this range, if it's not 2, but greater than or equal to 0, let's add a 1 to it. So this way, if it's negative 1, we'll change it back to 0. If it's 1, we'll change it up to 1, but we never want it to be 2. And if it is, because that's 0, 1, 2. Remember, this is 0, 1, 2. All right, that's going to work. So if I hit refresh, oh, nope, I did something wrong. See how he goes? He goes to a bad image. All right, let me see what I did wrong here. Man, I had to pause the video to see what was going on. I forgot to put dot .png at the end in my array. I was like, what in the world? This code looks great. All right, it wasn't a real PNG image. Well, I didn't put the extension. Okay, so now our guy can cruise around and be in the different states. Booyah, there we go. Okay, now we get to the fun part. Okay, so the fun part is we want to put some obstacles in. Okay, so he's scrolling. We can control him. Let's put some obstacles in. So I have these rocks. So if I create this rocks, um, images, I think I named it rocks.png. There's my rocks.png. Okay, and we want that rock to be able to go to a random location. So I want a random x and a random y. And so we want to do math.round and we're going to take math.random random and we're going to times it by a certain number. So remember we're 500 wide. The rocks, I don't know how big they are. We're probably going to have to scale them down. Let's go rocks.set size, I don't know, 40 by 40. We'll see what that looks like. Okay, and then we're going to go rocks.move to x, y. So we need to create x and y to be a random number. So if we're 500 wide and the rock takes up 40, let me say you can show up anywhere in the 460s. Okay. And then let's go math.round, math.random. So for the y direction, we're 2500. But we don't want them on the start section, so let's go 2200. And we don't, and then we need to move them at least, we need to add 50 to that number every time. That way it's not showing up, it doesn't have a chance of showing up right on top of us. So let's see how this does. So if I hit save and I hit refresh, I just realized the issue, right? We made one rock, there it is. Oh man, that's a big rock. That's where it showed up that time. Let's scale this down. Let's go 30 by 30, I guess. That's still a big rock. Man, let's go 20 by 20. Oh, there we go. There's a good sized rock. Okay, so we have this rock that's sticking out of the snow, and this creates one. So we don't want to sit and copy and paste this code all the time. That'd be ridiculous. Now I have four rocks, right? Oh, two of them showed up next to each other. So what we can do is we can make a for loop, all right? So these, what you do is a code segment that you want to run over and over again, you can put it in a for loop, and it's going to loop as many times as we tell it to, and it's just going to build whatever code is inside it. So what you start with a variable, and we're just going to say this variable i, that's always the one they use for for loops. 
is equal to zero. And as long as i is less than, I don't know, 30. So as long as it is less than 30, keep running this code. So i will be zero, the, the variable i, not myself. The variable i will be zero and it'll run this code. And then this tells it how much to increase by each time it runs. So it's gonna increase by one and then it will run it again as i equals one. And it will do that all the way till it gets to 30. So if I save and hit refresh, boom, there's our rocks. Look how many we got. Man, we had a lot up there. And then we ski through them. Oh, we need to move it down. See how they were way up here? We don't want any above that area. So this needs to be 150. And then this probably needs to change to 2100. So that they're not at the very bottom either. Let's make sure they can't show up. So every time I hit refresh, we got ourselves a new level. Okay, there we go. So there's some rocks. Okay, we're gonna do the same things with trees now. Now the one thing I forgot to do is our rocks need a type because we wanna hit the rocks. Okay, so now let me save this and copy it over. Okay, so here is our for loop for the rocks. And then here is our for loop for the trees. So I just copied everything, and I think I actually made tree singular for the image. Okay, and the size is going to be way different. We want, let's do a bigger tree. Okay. Oh, whoops, that's a fat tree. I don't want a fat tree. Oh, man, that's hard to ski through. They all got clumped up right there. That's a fat tree, though. I mix these up. Let's go 40 and 20. Save, refresh. There we go. That's a good looking tree. And here we go, buzzing through our little, oh, our little ski hill. This is working great. All right, so next what we need to do, since we got our skier cruising through, is let's go ahead and make the on hit. Okay, so hopefully these for loops make sense. This is the one of the main things I wanted to show you, is you can take a segment of code and run it as many times as you want. If we wanted 35 trees, a little bit less rocks, you could do that. If you wanted more rocks, less trees, you could do that. So now we're going to do an on hit. So let's go SJS on hit. And this is going to be between the player and the tree. Actually, let's do both. Player, tree, and rocks. Okay, so that's an array. So if he hits any one of those, then it'll react the same. And I made this... Um, image to show that he crashed. Okay, so x dot set image, and we're going to do images, and I think I named it crash dot png. And then let's have him get pushed up by 13. I don't want to kill the guy, I just want him to be able to bounce around, I think, to do something different. So let's try this. So I'm going to go ahead and save it and hit refresh and try and get through these. So there's our crash image. Did you see the crash image? And if you hit the rock, man, this is not going to be easy to get down. Okay. There we go. I made it through. So if you hit any of the objects, then it bounces you. So if I try and avoid these, oh gosh, send me all the way to the start. That's a better game. I like this version. Before I did it where you, um, you know, you just died. But this is way more interesting and forgiving. Okay, so there we have our ski free, our guy going down. Last thing we need to do is just add a win in. So we're going to go sgs.onhit, we're going to go player against the finish line and create a function and let's see we'll just say we'll do an alert you win and then let's just reload the page window.location equals index.html all right let's see if i can get all the way through so i'm going to save it and now i'm heading down oh man don't hit those trees There we go, you win. And then it starts again. Okay, so there we go, there's the beginning of Ski Free. Now, 
if you watch the, be the video at the beginning, I forgot this happens, the Yeti came out and ate us. So in part two, I'm gonna do another video where we're gonna have a Yeti come and chase you down. Um, and we could also do a timer too, so you can see how long it takes you to get down the mountain. So um, in future videos, I'm gonna build a Yeti, probably next week, and then I'm gonna build a timer so that you can see how fast you get down the mountain and a way to save it, and then you can play against your friends. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and enjoy it. Download the code, get whatever you want out of it, and um, enjoy. If you have any coding questions, let us know. We have great deals on Amazon on our products. If you want to learn some JavaScript like I'm doing here, or you can go on our website, sign up for a monthly membership, have access to all our courses. Great job, guys. Thanks for joining. Bye.